Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to this uh, new session. So in our previous session we have started with the uh, module 2 that is uh, about network theorems and we have discussed one important theorem that is superposition theorem in our previous session. Okay so the, those who have not seen that video it is available in our channel the uh, one before this video it is available in our channel you can check it out in our channel page also if you won't, don't get there check our playlist for network analysis and there you will be getting this video so please uh, do watch that video share this playlist to a huge number so from my side I am trying to provide you all the some of the conceptual videos of network analysis which would be very useful to you guys okay we have already covered with module 1 it is available in our playlist okay around 15 videos we have covered so please watch that as well so that's all now let's start with the problems of superposition theorem where in the last video we have uh, done with the proof part so this is one simple problem to start off with use superposition theorem to find current in the branch pq of circuit shown in the figure so this is the question provided here and here our goal is to find the current through branch pq so this is the branch pq here okay that is we should be finding the current i of pq and here simultaneously they have given two voltage sources at a time here you can see here okay as we have seen in the proof in the proof also we had two of the voltage sources so here also we have two voltage sources our goal is to find i of pq but we know that we have uh, got the relation of superposition theorem as since we have two sources here we should be eliminating one source and calculating uh, keeping one source at a time since we have two sources here so that's why we would be getting two alternate currents that is i dash of pq and i double dash of pq and the relationship between them is the algebraic sum of those two currents as we have seen in the proof of superposition theorem so this is the equation we should be obtaining that is we should be individually calculating i dash of pq as well as i double dash of pq by eliminating one of the voltage sources okay uh, use any method node analysis mesh analysis but i prefer you all to use mesh analysis because that is easy okay so that's why calculate two individual currents then lastly you should be adding them and finally you should be writing the i of pq current okay so this is clear so now let's solve for that now we should be considering one voltage source at a time right so now let's consider this voltage source and eliminate this source so in order to eliminate this source what we store uh, what we have the relation that is according to superposition theorem whenever we want to eliminate any voltage source we should be making short circuit so now let's write the simplified circuit by considering only one voltage source at a time that is 4.2 volt the rest all the things keep it as it is this 2 ohm resistance this 3 ohm resistance 1 ohm resistance and this 2 ohm resistance and which we should be making a short circuit here okay 2 ohm 3 ohm pq this is i dash of pq now since we have removed this voltage source here 2 ohm 4.2 volt 1 ohm so this is the first part circuit by considering only one voltage source at a time so now apply a mesh analysis consider two loops name them as i1 and i2 and solve for two separate loops using a mesh analysis that is for loop i1 which we are which we already know we have solved so many problems consider the outward going sign that is here it is plus 4.2 then we have minus 2 into i1 minus 3 into i1 minus i2 because i1 is between i3 uh, is between i1 and i2 since we are considering i1 minus this whole that is minus 1 into i1 that is i1 equal to 0 minus 2 i1 minus 3 i1 plus 3 i2 minus i1 equal to 0 so if we solve it here 2 minus 2 minus 3 and minus 1 that is minus 6 i1 plus 3 i2 is equal to plus 4.2 bring it to other side it would be minus 4.2 so that is one equation name it as equation 1 similarly solve for loop i2 that is start from this 3 ohm only that is minus 3 into i2 minus i1 since we are considering loop i2 and this 3 ohm is between these two loops so that's why then we have this resistance that is minus 2 i2 equal to 0 minus 3 i2 plus 3 i1 minus 2 i2 equal to 0 so 3 i1 minus 3 minus 2 is minus 5 i2 equal to 0 okay so like this we have obtained with these two equations here 
so now we sh our goal is to find the individual currents i1 and i2 right so by using in the which i already done in the calculator since we have only two currents to find out so we should be pressing equation and one okay which i already told in my previous videos so those who did not understand that see my previous videos in that i have clearly mentioned what is five and one okay so those who don't understand it that is mode setup press equation five then press a n x plus b n y equal to c n that is one and fill the co co coefficient starting from the i1 coefficient that is minus six three minus four point two three minus five zero so this is the first current that is the value is one ampere and the second current value is point six ampere okay so here we can consider this as i1 dash and i2 dash because we are calculating for i dash of pq right so like this you have got two currents but here our goal is not to find these two currents our goal is to find this intermediate current that is i dash of pq we know that this current i dash of pq it is between these two branches i1 and i2 we have already calculated i1 and i2 and the greater current in this case is i1 so that's why you should be considering i1 dash minus i2 dash since this is between these two branches so that's why i dash of pq is equal to 1 minus 0 0.6 so finally our i dash of pq is equal to 0.4 ampere okay so we have found one one of the current that is i dash of pq so now consider one more voltage source and find i double dash of pq okay we have here I have written the reduced part okay here in this case now I have eliminated this voltage source that is 4.2 volt voltage source I made short circuit because we are eliminating the voltage source and kept this voltage source as it is now now again apply mesh analysis that is for loop i1 and loop i2 here now in this case where we would be getting different kind of equations and i1 i2 values would be changing okay so now that is equal to start from loop i1 so start from this resistor outward sign is minus so minus 2 i1 then we have minus 3 i1 minus i2 then we have minus i1 equal to 0 so minus 2 i1 minus 3 i1 plus 3 i2 minus i1 equal to 0 minus 2 minus 3 minus 1 that is minus 6 i1 plus 3 i2 equal to 0 so this is one equation name it as equation 1 similarly solve for loop i2 that is start from this voltage source outgoing sign is plus so 3.5 then minus 3 into i2 minus i1 now then we have minus 2 i2 equal to 0 3.5 minus 3 i2 plus 3 i1 minus 2 i2 equal to 0 so 3 i1 minus 3 minus 2 is minus 5 i2 equal to this plus 3.5 bring it to other side it would be minus 3.5 that is equation 2. So now we should be finding for i1 double dash and i2 double dash since we are cal calculating i double dash of pq right. So now again in the calculator in this equation only put the coefficients values that is minus 6 3 0 3 minus 5 minus 3.5 so our values are one is 0.5 ampere and another one is 1 ampere okay see here the values here the currents i1 double dash and i2 double dash have changed here see because you have considered now this voltage source by eliminating this source so that's why it has changed so i double dash of pq is Again, this is between these two branches of uh, uh, loops. So that's why we can say that the greater current minus the lower current that is I2 double dash minus I1 double dash. So I double dash of PQ is equal to 1 minus 0 0.5 I double dash of PQ. You would be getting it as 0 0.5 ampere. Okay. So we have written this equation that is our goal is to find the current through the 
branch PQ of the given circuit here, right? This is the original circuit. For this, our we should be finding the answer by splitting these by these two circuits. We have uh, solved this by using superposition theorem. So that is I dash of PQ. What we have got here in this case, we have got the value as 0.4 ampere. And I double dash of PQ, we have got it as 0.5 ampere. So final answer of uh, I of PQ that is equal to 0.9 amps. Okay, so like this, you should be solving this problem. Hope this is clear. So let's solve one more problem and uh, wind this session. So this is the next question. A bit lengthy problem, but uh, very easy. So here in this case, how many sources we are having that we should be counting first. So in this, we have one dependent source. Keep it. And for dependent source, we have some set of rules of superposition theorem, which we have already discussed. That is for any dependent source, we cannot be replacing this dependent source. That is. We should be keeping this dependent source as it is and solving the problem. But here in this case, we are having three sources that is one dependent source, one voltage source and one current source along with the two resistances. And this is the current controlled voltage source and this current here is flowing through this branch that is across this 3 ohm resistance. Okay. Again, here our goal is to find current I in the network shown in the figure using superposition theorem. Our goal is to find this current I small letter i that is small letter i flowing through this resistance we know that this is flowing through this resistor here that is we can say that we should be finding current through 3 ohm resistance but here you can see that we are having three sources so we should be splitting into three currents that is i dash of 3 ohm plus i double dash of 3 ohm plus i triple dash of 3 ohm Okay, so this is the equation. Why I have written three currents? Because I've, I've told you how many number of sources, that many number of currents you should be adding them. Okay, so this is our equation now. We should be splitting this network into three different kinds of network, keeping only one source at a time. Okay, so that's why we are having three sources here. We should be eliminating any two sources in the first step and solving. So in the first step, what I'll do is, I'll keep this dependent source as it is. And here we have three of the sources here. Okay. That is two current source and one voltage source. So now what I should be doing is you should not be not be touching this uh, dependent source. In this case, I'm keeping this voltage source as it is and removing these two current sources. Okay. So how, what I told you, if you want to remove any current source, you should be open the open. You should be completely eliminating those branches consisting of current source. That is, you should be making open circuit. So what happens? These two branches completely vanishes in this part. That is, we would be left with only this dependent source minus plus 4i 3 ohm resistance i dash of 3 ohm and this voltage source as it is. That is 10 volt 2 ohm. And these two branches are completely eliminated because we are making open circuit not short circuit if we had a voltage source we would be having this one line and these two would be separate loops now right so in this case we have made open circuit two of the current sources we have completely eliminated keep kept only one source at a time and i've told you this dependent source you should be keeping as it is in case of source position, superposition theorem we should not be not be eliminating the dependent source okay so here we have only one single loop okay and in that loop, this current is traveling, that is I of 3 ohm, I dash, this current I dash is traveling. So write this now, you can name it for I as I dash, wherever I is there in the first step, name it as I dash. Okay. Now, I dash current is flowing through this loop. For this loop, now apply KVL, mesh analysis, that is write the equation for loop I dash. That is, start from this resistance, minus 2 I dash, then we have plus... 4 i dash then we have a minus 3 i dash plus 10 equal to 0 solve minus 2 plus 4 minus 3 that is equal to minus i dash is equal to minus 10 so that's why minus minus gets cancelled our i dash of 3 ohm is equal to 10 ampere so like this we have solved in the simple way for first current so now this is done. Now we should be calculating I double dash of 3 ohm by considering any one of the source by eliminating other two sources. So now in this case, I am keeping this current source 
and eliminating these two sources that is one voltage source and one current source okay so i'm keeping this source now that is the second step i've kept this 2 ampere source as it is this dependent source as it is 3 ohm and this voltage source have made short circuit here okay you can observe here and this current is now i double dash of 3 ohm minus plus 4 i of double dash this is 8 amp 2 ampere and this is 2 ohm okay hope this is clear now we have two separate loops because we have this uh, current here okay name those two loops as i1 i2 now you can see that we are having one concept called a super mesh we have already discussed between these two loops we have one current source so that's why what we would be getting we would be getting one complete loop and that complete loop is called as a super loop which we have already discussed so according to that write the equation that is according to super mesh one relation we would be obtaining that is this uh, 2 ampere current is there right that is i2 minus i1 is equal to 2 ampere this is one relation we are obtaining that is according to super mesh right so name that as equation 1 now uh, since we have one super mesh you should be considering one complete loop first ok for that super mesh write the uh, apply KVL and write this equation that is consider this as one complete loop so start from, from this 2 ohm that is 2 minus 2 into i1 since this 2 ohm is in this loop i1 loop then we have plus 4 i double dash and then we have minus 3 i2 equal to 0 and now what is this value of i double dash here if you observe carefully this i double dash is in this uh, is flowing through this loop that is i2 loop so that's why we can conclude we have we can conclude one more statement that is i double dash is equal to i2 okay keep this as it is now whatever the value of i2 we get while solving for these two equations separately that would be our i double dash of 3 ohm okay so now minus 2 i1 plus 4 i2 since i double dash is equal to i2 minus 3 i2 equal to 0 minus 2 i1 4 minus 3 is 1 plus i2 equal to 0 now what we can do is consider equation 1 in equation 1 in place of i2 substitute uh, i make i2 is equal to 2 plus i1 bring this i1 to other side and make i2 is equal to 2 plus i1 and substitute this 2 plus i1 in this sequence so, so that we would be getting the value of i1 okay that is minus 2 i1 plus 2 plus i1 equal to 0 so 2 minus 2 and uh, plus 1 that is minus i1 is equal to minus 2 so i1 is equal to 2 ampere okay so you've got the value of i1 so now substitute this value of i1 in this equation that is we have this equation right i2 minus i1 is equal to 2 ampere in this equation now substitute the value of i1 that is minus 2 equal to 2 so i2 is equal to 2 bring this minus 2 to other side would be plus 2 so finally our value of i2 is equal to 4 ampere our goal was to find the value of i2 since we know that i we have obtained with the relation chart i double dash is equal to i2 so that's how we can conclude that i double dash of 3 ohm is equal to 4 ampere okay so we have got two of the currents now our final current is i triple dash of 3 ohm that is in this circuit which are the two combinations we have done we have kept once 10 volt source and eliminated these two we have kept this 2 ampere source and eliminated these two now one more combination is left that is we, we should be keeping this outer branch 8 ampere current and eliminating these two branches okay so after that this would be completely gone this branch and this would be making keeping short circuit and this would be one separate branch that is we would be getting this kind of circuit here so like this I have written this reduced circuit where I have eliminated this branch here which we are, was having one current source and one mounted source I made short circuit okay hope this is clear so now after that we can see that we are having two loops here and one thing we can conclude that is I2 is equal to 8 ampere because this loop here one current source is already there and it is having the same direction of the loop so that's why this is one positive current we can conclude that I2 is equal to 
8 ampere our goal here is to find the value of i1 because this current i triple dash lies in this loop i1 so that's why now apply uh, mesh analysis and write the equation that is for loop 1 and one more thing we can conclude is that is i triple dash is equal to i1 in this case right just now we have told it how now apply kvl for loop 1 use mesh analysis that is minus 2 i1 then we have plus 4 i1 because i triple dash is equal to i1 then we have minus 3 into i1 minus i2 means we know that the value of i2 is 8 so that's why minus 8 equal to 0 so minus 2 i1 plus 4 i1 minus 3 i1 minus minus plus 24 3 eights are 24 equal to 0 minus 2 plus 4 minus 3 minus that is minus i1 is equal to 24 bring it to other side so sorry i have made one mistake here that is this i triple dash is not equal to i1 because this branch here i triple dash is between these two loops right so we can say that this is equal to i1 minus i2 that is i1 minus 8 so here we would be getting i1 minus 8 i1 minus 8 and here this is i1 minus 8 okay so make that change here so sorry for that now solve that is minus 2 i1 minus minus plus 16 plus 4 i1 minus 4 8s are 32 minus 3 i1 is equal to sorry minus plus 24 equal to 0 make that correction okay then minus 2 plus 4 minus 3 that is equal to minus 5 i1 sorry minus i1 minus 2 plus minus 2 minus 3 is minus 5 plus 4 is minus 1 is equal to then we have 16 plus 24 that is uh, how much it is 24 plus 16 is 40 minus uh, 40 minus 32 is 8 if you bring 8 to other side it would be minus 8 so i1 is equal to 8 amperes okay make that change i triple dash is equal to i1 minus 8 not i1 because this i triple dash is between i1 and i2 right okay this 3 ohm resistance is between i1 and i2 and the value of i2 is equal to 8 i triple dash is equal to i1 minus 8 so minus 2 into i1 minus 8 i1 minus 8 make, make that change okay so this is the value of i1 we have got here okay so we've got the value of i1 put it in this equation to find the value of i triple dash of 3 ohm that is i1 minus 8 that is 8 minus 8 so our i of triple dash of 3 ohm is equal to 0 ampere okay no current so our final equation that is i of 3 ohm is equal to i dash of 3 ohm which we have got it as 10 ampere here plus i double dash of 3 ohm we have got it here as 4 ampere plus 0 so finally our i of 3 ohm is equal to 14 ampere okay so hope this is clear like this you should be finding the in this circuit the current through 3 ohm resistance okay using superposition theorem hope this is clear so that's all for this session guys we have solved two, two of the important problems related to superposition theorem so in the next uh, session we are going to discuss with one more kind of theorem that is Thevenin's theorem okay that is also very easy let's discuss that in the next session thank you